Well, I think uh, with this last recording, we have an identity problem. If I'm concerned about consciousness, it's a question of consciousness. And the question of consciousness is existing but not in some tangible way. You know, it's not matter. It's a question. Um, it's a bit like the principles of mathematics. I mean, there's a truth that exists, you know, that two and two makes four, according to a certain construction. Um, it will always be the case that if you have that construction, you would have that outcome. You know, the notion of number. The truth exists. But we haven't proved that the object exists. Only, only the Or if it is, if truth is an object, it's a very strange one. It doesn't seem to have something you can see, taste, touch, you know, etc. Um, and yet it seems to be a fundamental truth, reality. You know, the notion that God is truth, everything is built on Him. And so I think I'm saying that both matter and personhood are something of this intangible existence called truth, which is eternal, of course. You know, two and two are always equal four, if that's how you've defined them. <laughs> that the universe of matter is like congealed truth or energy in equilibrium. That even temporary existence is because of some equilibrium. We've split the atom and it results in incredible energy being released and the vanishment of the matter. It's as if it's been dissipated in particles of energy that have been flung off. That it was just the particles, but the particles were in some incredible harmonious tension And we've reached the harmony of it, and it explodes. Its energy just dissipates off into eternity. Um, the atom bomb, if you like, is the epitome of violence. The breach of the harmony. Do the particles shoot off into eternity um, until they hit some other particle and somehow get united again into what we would see as basis of matter, that that void in the universe, that thing that we call space, is this teeming life of energy, um, force field particles that have the potential, of course, of meeting up and coming into a harmony and producing matter, so that the 
visible universe of matter is forever being renewed and obliterated in in violence and renewed and life as we understand it matter you can see as that temporary phase between such but that the foundation of it all is these minute particles which you could call um, I don't know smaller than atoms certainly smaller than electrons whatever they are I'll call them lifetrons because if they're the basic building blocks of all that is, we've come to the I'm tempted to say we've come to God the unmanifest and he is life potentially. Look at us, we're alive. <laughs> we're made from such we are made in him you see I tell you that science is the only true religion but it's a religion that's in its infancy and doesn't help us very much with our day-to-day -day problems. Every now and again it gives us some startling help and we find, oh, I don't know, how to grow three times as many crops on the same piece of land or something. But basically in getting on with each other and living happily and science doesn't doesn't have as much to teach us as more rough and ready religions that we identify as religion. But just as the theory that um, uh, well, religion is the best religion, the ultimate religion is truth. There's no religion like that. And science has been, you know, it's in its infancy, but it's, it's attempting to handle what is true. It's forever trying to find out what's true, what's given. What's the understanding? How is this actually put together, this universe? <laughs> We had an ancient wisdom that was God that um, comes down to earth and disassembles himself for our sakes and is resurrected, put together again. And he's our hope of glory. Isn't that what we've just described about our universe? this supposed void keeps regenerating the stars and the stars explode slowly or, f or fast slowly over billions of years or over a few minutes in a supernova back into the we have called void which is everything the very foundation of all isn't that how we have seen God? no, that's not a very personal God oh, 
than that. If the void of space is the foundation of everything that we are and have existed, <laughs> he's potentially a very personal God too. Unmanifest in the form of space. Manifest in the form of you and me. How lovely. Who can tell what he's going to achieve next? Wow, and we're part of it. Love you, Dad. <laughs> well, I've just said this in passing. Food for thought, perhaps. Bless you. Thank you, Dad.